In this video, we will show how to set up and use RapidSpar. In front of us is a standard RapidSpar kit with the optional adapter set. This includes the user manual, the RapidSpar device, optional adapters for less common interfaces, standard cables and adapters for SATA and IDE drives, and the power supply. Everything fits inside an aluminum carry case, making it easy to use RapidSpar for on-site work. There is even an empty slot for a 3.5-inch target drive to store recovered data. Inside the RapidSpar device is an interchangeable 120GB Kingston SSD used to hold the logs and project files for every case. This ensures that we can pause and resume the recovery process at any time without losing progress. We can now connect RapidSpar to a USB 3 port on your PC. RapidSpar identifies in Windows as a USB mass storage device. All we have to do to install the software and activate the unit is launch RSA setup, copy the licensing information from an automated email, and press the software and firmware upgrade button. In only a few minutes, we are ready to start our first recovery. Here we have a Hitachi laptop drive. Connecting it to a computer does not produce any results because this drive is not capable of identifying. Now let's try it with RapidSpar. We begin by connecting a healthy drive to the target port, the patient drive to the source port, and the power supply to the RapidSpar unit. We can do a full sector-by-sector -sector clone using the standalone RapidSpar device. All other functionality is available from the RapidSpar Assistant Windows software, which we will launch now. The first step is to run the drive through cloud-driven Rapid Nebula Diagnostics. All we have to do is provide basic information about the drive and press start. Over the next few minutes, RapidSpar tests the drive and sends the diagnostic information to Rapid Nebula for analysis. Rapid Nebula will then send back a diagnostic log, which we can see below. This drive is not capable of identifying, but we do have access to its CPU, ROM, and firmware. The defect lists are corrupted, making this a good candidate for firmware repair. The only setting is for the level of risk that we are willing to accept for this recovery. Level 1 only applies temporary solutions loaded into drive RAM, which are safe to try. Level 2 and 3 also include solutions which require permanent changes to the service area located on the platters. On this drive, both copies of the grown defect list are corrupted, causing the entire translator module to fail and all data to be inaccessible. The RapidSpar device reads both corrupted copies and sends them to Rapid Nebula, where they are assembled into one integral copy. The repaired grown defect list is then downloaded to the RapidSpar device and loaded directly into Drive RAM to restore access to data. Now that data is accessible, we are ready to start a new project and begin recovering the drive. All sectors read from the source drive are first saved to the healthy target drive and only then sent to the PC for analysis. All secondary requests for the same sectors are automatically served by the healthy target drive, ensuring that we read each sector from the damaged source drive only once. As soon as we start a new project, RapidSpar recovers the master boot record and partition tables, displaying any partitions that it was able to find. At this point, we can choose to clone all sectors in use by the file system. This clone will be bootable as long as bad sectors do not prevent us from recovering critical system software elements. Alternatively, we can load the file tree and recover only specific files and folders. During this process, RapidSpar is recovering and parsing all file system elements of the selected partition. This metadata is required to display a file tree and target specific files and folders for recovery. Supported file systems for this functionality include NTFS, HFS+, EXT2, 3, and 4, XFS, FAT32, and XFAT. Whenever the recovery process slows down, we can look at the RapidSpar device to see exactly what is happening. In this case, there are many bad sectors within file system metadata, and the drive starts to click whenever it hits them. By default, RapidSpar will retry failed block reads sector by sector to retrieve every good sector within every bad block. This is appropriate for most situations. However, in this case, 
the drive is in very poor condition and could easily suffer a complete failure before we recover enough data. To reduce the chances of this happening, we can make the recovery process much lighter by changing the way RapidSpar processes bad sectors. The Skip Bads option will instruct RapidSpar to cut bad sector processing at an earlier point and never retry bad blocks sector by sector. This option greatly speeds up the rate of processing of bad areas, thereby reducing the level of stress applied on the drive. The file system metadata of our selected partition has now been recovered. We can select particular files by using the search function or by manually checking the box next to files or folders we want to recover. For this case, we will recover the users folder. We can check this box to automatically skip any files with bad sectors in them. This means that RapidSpar will stop recovering a file as soon as it finds a single bad sector within it, which saves a lot of time and reduces drive stress. We can also skip files manually. For example, right now we can see that it is trying to recover a file, but every block is failing to read and the drive makes loud clicking sounds. At this time, we can skip the current file and move on. Now that our files are recovered to the target drive, we can have a look at their integrity status. Every file with at least one bad sector in it will show as corrupted. Some of these files could still be usable depending on the type of file and level of corruption. We can open them to check. Finally, we can save recovered data to any folder accessible by this PC to complete the recovery process. Let's try another drive. This time, we cannot view partitions or load the file tree because critical file system elements are missing. Instead, we have to clone the drive and then scan the clone with logical recovery software. First, we'll do a cloning pass using the skip bad setting. This way, we are only recovering blocks which are easy to read, minimizing the chance of total drive failure during this pass. It took 1.5 hours to finish and just over 17,000 sectors were skipped with resets. Now we power off the source and mount the target drive. In this mode, RapidSpar gives Windows access to the target drive and blocks all writes to prevent our clone from getting corrupted. After limiting the scan range to match the source drive, we found 1.3 million files and the results appear to be worthwhile. So let's go back to RapidSpar and do a second pass to recover more data. To retry sectors which were skipped, we have to first go into the map tool and change the status of all skip sectors back to unprocessed, effectively marking them to be read again. Now all we have to do is start the cloning process again, this time on the balance setting, which uses a longer read timeout and retries missed blocks sector by sector. RapidSpar is skipping past sectors which were recovered on the first pass and retrying only the areas which fail to read. This second pass took eight hours to finish and about 7,000 sectors remain unread, so we recovered an additional 10,000 sectors. This pass took five times longer to finish than the first and applied a lot of stress on the drive, which is why it's a good idea to run it only after easily accessible sectors have already been recovered. After scanning with RStudio again, we found an extra 82 files. In the same manner, we could also do a third pass using the dig bad setting to maximize data retrieval. Let's try another drive. After running diagnostics, we can see that head one is reading poorly. If we start recovering data now, we do not get very far because as soon as we reach the bad head, the drive starts to click and our recovery process slows down to a crawl. To stop this from happening, we can disable head one using the map tool. First, we have to build a head map. During this process, Rapid Nebula sends down the relevant vendor-specific commands for this drive, and RapidSpar uses them to determine which head each sector belongs to. Now that it's finished, we can change the status of all Head 1 sectors to skip, ensuring that RapidSpar does not try to read Head 1. Because we disabled one out of three heads, we only have access to two-thirds of the drive. Our results from here will depend on how lucky we get. In some cases, it will still be possible to build a file tree, and in other cases, we'll have to take a partial clone using good heads, and then do a raw recovery with RStudio like we did for the last drive. When we continue loading the file tree, RapidSpar quickly scans past all sectors which belong to head one without reading them, 
so our recovery process moves quickly and the drive doesn't click. We can see that the lost folder is quite large because many file paths are now incomplete due to missing file system metadata. Regardless, we can launch a file search as usual and recover all JPEG files. If we use the skip files with bad sectors option, then files which have at least one sector belonging to a disabled head will be skipped immediately without any read attempts. We can see that we are recovering roughly two thirds of the files we selected and the rest are being skipped. Thank you for watching. Thank you.